Rock Podcast. Midnight, 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 Paco. Midnight Paco Podcast. Midnight Paco. Midnight Paco Podcast. Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome to the Midnight Paco Podcast. As always, you can find me at Justin Fuller Comedy on Instagram. I am the underscore great underscore C O R E E. That's where you can find me. Or you can find us both at the Midnight Paco Podcast on Instagram. Yes, you can. Please hit the like, subscribe. It's going to be right here somewhere. Notifications, if you will, please. We love everybody out there. Appreciate everybody, all the listeners on all platforms. Everyone out there just listening at your job when you're like, man, fuck this place. <laughs> Appreciate you listening, because that's what I be doing throughout the day. This episode of the Midnight Pocket Podcast brought to you in part by the Acumen Paralegal Services help you help yourself the legal way. The services that they offer is they help with documents that need to be typed, guardianships, probate, divorce, wills and trusts, complaints, business organization, financial planning, and legal research and writing. Go ahead and give them a call at 216-727-0049 or 216-456-2000. Michelle White will get you right. That's right! <laughs> what up, yo? Slow motion. Congratulations once again. Thank you. On another successful show. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. It was, it was dope. It was, uh... I was worried at first. I was because no one was there and I got nervous and it was raining. Right. And um, my comics wasn't there. Right. Nobody but me and my family and, you know, the bar owners were there. I showed up. Then he sprinkled in. Then a few comics sprinkled in. Yeah. And then it just was like magic, like boom. Boom. Show must go on. The show must go on, and then the people came in. So yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. I had a, a nice lineup. Uh, everybody seemed to enjoy the show. Yes, they did. It sounds like I, I, I got good things on both sides. I got good things from the patrons. Thanks for everybody that came out. Right, right. Please continue to come. Yeah, and just support live comedy. Period. That's what it is, man. And you're getting a treat. Yes, you're getting a treat because, like I said, man, the, the people on the lineups been dope. You know the the talent is upper echelon in the Cleveland area. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And they're branched, they've branched out. You know, they've gone everywhere, you know what I'm saying, yeah. obviously, and doing things. So, yeah. oh, man, yeah, it was a great show. Thank you. you want to shout out who's on the show? Absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to Tim Buck too. Right. Shout out to Kim uh, Key Silly. Yeah, Key Silly. Shout out to Gene Miller. Special shout out to Gene Special Miller. Special shout, yeah. You know, he came in, you know. I called him and he came and answered right up. He didn't, you know, questions asked. So right, right. Shout out to Eugene Miller. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Hey, uh, shout out to um, Jin Jin. Jin did Jin. His thing, you know, and shout out to this dude over here who did his thing, Justin Fuller. Did his thing. <laughs> and shout out to uh, James Dobra. Yeah, James Dobra. Yeah, he did his thing. Everybody did their thing. And. Um. Shout out to Spike Lou. Last but not least. Shout it down, yeah. baby. Blah, blah, blah. Bam. Yeah, shout out to Spike Lou, and I appreciate it. He was singing, it. too. I was jamming, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to Spike Lou. He did yeah. his thing. Yeah, he did for his sure. Thing. Every, everybody that uh, I um, I pick and invite, it. I'm a fan of their comedy. I think they're great. And um, they actually came and, and did better than I thought because it's like from the comedy that I remember seeing them, they were great. And they, they did even, to me, even better job at my show, so shout out to right. them. Right, right, yeah, no, appreciate it, man. Love the opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Everyone, oh man, you already know, bro. I already told you, like, anything you want to do, let uh, me know. You, I know you can do whatever you want to do. 
or anything I'm involved with. So, I understand you know. and be so, and likewise, you already know. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it, but it's on. It. It's it, it is because you you've put together a good environment. You know what I'm saying? Good good comics. I mean, it's like a, it's like I said once again. It's a testament. You know, and and to the one you know, the shout out to those that we've met. You know, in this journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And those. We we've said it from the beginning. Those those that are riding with us are ones we're gonna always ride with. You know what I'm saying? And right. and that's what we're trying to build here is that network. Because look, you look in every city, they got like especially like in L. A. You know, you got all those big podcasters that are out there doing it because they're like in L. A. This and that. But like, there's a lot of us out here doing the damn thing in, in the Cleveland area. And as long as we stick together and we're all on each other's shit and we're all pumping each other's stuff and we're all supporting one another. There's there's growth in you know numbers you know what I'm saying in a sense you can do it by yourself it just takes a long time maybe unless you're unless you're a single star shout out to you you know what I'm saying and, and if you're good I'll watch I ain't a hater you know what I'm saying but right. it's just like it's awesome how like there's that love out there you know what I'm saying like Jen Jen she has her stuff Tim Buck too he's doing his damn thing you know what I'm right, saying right there's all everyone's out there has got their stuff going on and it's just it's awesome to see how people are taking advantage you know what I'm saying you know there's lightweight things we still want to do right. you know what I mean but you know it's it's I it's, I, I just see it as um uh... As uh, you know, people like you know that truly that mess with each other, just messing with each other. You know what I mean? Like right. we doing the same thing. I got to line up. They got to line up. We right. got a podcast. They got a podcast. It's right. no like we support. We genuinely support one another. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I, I've been to those guys' shows. I've been to a bunch of shows just to support. Right, right. You know, not even. Don't even care if they know that I was a comic or not. <laughs> yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Especially early on. Right. Yeah. yeah I've done yeah. a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I still will. But it's like lately I haven't really had time. It's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah. It's, especially when you're trying to balance. Hey, theme songs in this piece. Yeah. And <laughs> hey, that was Will. Shout out to Will Hopkins. Oh, shout out to Will Hopkins. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm when text him. Okay. Yeah, when you're trying to balance, you know that that lifestyle, you know that work life, you know real stuff, and the fact that we're grown, and it's like, uh, like I said, man, I, I pull up my job, and it's like I got to be here for eight hours, and it's like, not that I wouldn't use that. I could probably use that time to be productive if I was getting paid to do stuff at night. You know what I'm saying? Right. And go and do my stand up and stuff like that, but. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's how people, like, can stay in shape better because they ain't got that bullshit-ass job. You know what I mean? I, right. Definitely. It's it's just a different... I don't know. Because when, when we go out, we spend hours out. So it's... You know what I mean? Technically, we're getting paid the moment we leave. <laughs> but we only get paid a certain amount of time when you're on stage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even as, like, a headliner who goes out and does an hour. They get paid good money. But technically, they're working. Preparing the whole day for that performance mentally, oh, you know what I'm saying? Mentally, in yeah, a sense, actually, yeah, because you the, the whole day I thought about yesterday, mm -hmm. I thought about the performance and what I was gonna do, and I knew how I wanted to do it. I we talked about how I wanted to put this 10 minutes together, and you know, it's like I timed it out, it was like eight something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, that's cool, and I figure with a little bit of the crowd, it'll get to like 10. What, 12 minutes later? <laughs> yeah, like 12. <laughs> Y'all talking with God, all right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think fun. you had fun. I had a good time. And that was the key. It was like uh, I wanted to relax. The, my whole thing was slow it down. Slow it down. I got time. That was the thing. You're not rushed. You're in a comfortable, you got time. Right. That was my biggest thing. I knew I was impressed for time because, you know, you, were running this, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was pressed for time. So right. it was like a thing where I was like, I'm cool. I'm good. As long, this is what I want to get out. As long as I let, get let, this Let me out. just say this. In addition to him saying, he, you know, I, because he was running it, he was still 
respectful of it. It wasn't like he did a whole thirty minute no, special. No, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. He, it was it was a it was a chunk that I knew was around that time. Right. Yeah, but with crowd interaction it stretched and Oh yeah. Nothing wrong with crowd interaction. It just Mm-mm. took the time of if it would have been like a show, like that. I'm not, a, you know, nobody knows the fuck I am. They're just letting me on there, and they're like, "Who this motherfucker?" Well, one of those deals. This is what I'm saying. Like when you perform at like intimate crowds like that, and you up close. Let's just say you did move on, and you got bigger. And bigger. Right, right. You could get a fan for life. For those type of crowds. For sure. Crowd interactions and just by you being in the same area, like, chilling like close there. close and personal, like, oh, this motherfucker is just real. Right. Least, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Man. So that that builds your, uh, I guess, your entertainment footprint, I guess. Oh, for sure. I had a great time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I did a good job. I think you, you, did, know what you mean? did a great job. Yeah. You did real good. Yeah. It's I think everybody did good. Shout out to everybody. Oh, yeah, everybody did man. their thing, and I, yeah. and I appreciate Actually, since I started doing it, <laughs> I appreciate everybody. And, and For you know, sure. And I, and I know everybody wasn't... I, I had an idea that everybody wasn't going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, and do it for me. So, right, you right. know, and, and, and a few of that has happened. Right, right. But I, I just want everybody to keep the same energy. But, um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, hey, look, there's, there's, I mean, we, you're going to feel it in any, any job. Yeah. Basically. It's, it's a job, but it's not a job to me. Yeah. I know it's a job. I know people are out there to get work, but I think the work will come if you know if you're good at what you're doing, you know what I'm saying? And if, if you keep working and and you keep just, yeah, keep getting better. You know what I mean? The work will come if you keep at it. You know, the more you get on shows, the more people say, Hey, you want to be on the, you know what I mean? You just get more recognized. I think if you, if you stay at it, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, you, you just keep moving forward. It's, it's going to happen. I mean, I I hear you. Whatever. I hear you, but you know, that, that, it takes a little more. It does. It, it takes does. a little more than than that. No, you, it does. You, you gotta, you you gotta, gotta have personality. You gotta have personality for one. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I mean, that, look, I already said ego is the worst thing. I, 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 I hate. <laughs> somebody. I mean, that. for example, like you can have somebody that's uh, constantly hitting mics, probably for longer than us. Mm-hmm. And don't have anything else going on other than they they've been hitting mics. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, then that's just the <coughs> fear of branching out. I mean, or the or they're just not. I mean, I fear of branching out because you still got to put something together at fear, some point. It could be. I'm not going to say it's not the fear of branching out, but I'm going to also say like that putting rep, putting rep, putting rep is which is good. But if that's all you're doing. Oh yeah, yeah. If you ask me, you're you're a hamster on the wheel. Oh, for sure. No, you got to work towards the goal. You got you got to work towards the you goal. You got to network. Yeah. You got to branch out. You got to. Well, we already know you can't do a show by yourself. Hmm. You can even if you want. I mean, even like Jerry Seinfeld has somebody hosting. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's like he's not even if he goes out there like Bill Cosby's a one man show, but if somebody probably introduces him. You know what I'm saying? There's somebody that puts shit together. You need. You need a team, and you need a personality to have people to like you. Bill has that personality. Oh, he does. But that, oh, he sells out shit. Yeah, he's out there doing the, things. I'm, I'm just using him as examples. Yeah. He's like a one man show, right? You know what I'm saying? But and he has maybe, but he can't do it by himself. He has right. to have somebody introduce him. He doesn't have to, but somebody does. I guarantee somebody introduces him. Maybe you know what I'm saying? I haven't been to a show, but somebody if I can introduce him. <laughs> But somebody from behind the curtain uh, did did JB Smooth, right? I believe so. Yeah. It's still somebody's voice. Yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? So either way, you need somebody, your boy, and it don't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Somebody that likes you. You're going to have a fucking personality. And and I guess that's all you need is one motherfucker to ride, but it's good to have a network. You know what I'm saying? But look, people feel that they're above, and they may feel a certain way, and, and, and whatever. It is what it is. Sure. It's, it's an easy job, dude. I'm at my job. 
people been there 20 years, they feel they ain't, ain't got to pull their weight and do, you know what I mean, do certain things and they avoid shit and that's everywhere you go. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be there. Sure, keep that energy all day. You know what I'm saying? But keep that's, that energy. But that's where you separate, you know what I mean, who's cool and who's not. And people have, you know, they deserve second chances. Of course. They deserve second chances. So, sure. you know what I mean? But at the same time, wow. you've seen who's come through and been riding and you know what I'm saying? So Of course. That that that's that's the cool thing about this though, is that you do meet people and you know what I mean, and they're all out there at all ages. Right. And and who's been there doing it different years. You know, at the same different levels. Different right. ages, different levels, you know what I'm saying? But it's all the same goal, just to mm. make somebody laugh. And they all have their own experience, their own stories. You know what I mean? It's right. it's just and it's all about how you deliver it. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the biggest thing I'm you know I'm learning is you ain't gotta have a laugh, laugh, laugh. It's good. I try and build it that way. It's but not necessarily you don't need you know what I mean, you just it's you're trying to get up there and tell your shit. You know what I mean? Ultimately, all, all, all I all I've seen, like when I watched a lot of comedy specials, is somebody that had a, a routine that was talking nonstop. Right. <laughs> Wasn't a lot of laughter, but they were yeah definitely talking. De- definitely talking. Yeah, we get a lot of laughter. Even if they were telling a story, like Jeff Foxworthy. Okay, he tells stories. Mm-hmm. But he he makes it funny in between. Exactly. But, but he he'll like little things. He'll set it up. Little things. Yeah. Little things. That's all. Yeah. He'll set it up, and then it, and it'll be clever. Like it'll be a a real clever put together joke. Right. Real clever. Well, I mean, think about when you're telling a story after the fact. You know, you put your choreism on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not exactly how it went down. But your delivery of it, it can be exactly, but the delivery of it is what, how the story, Im, you know, impacts somebody. Sure. Your hand gestures, your fucking, and this motherfucker was like, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. It's just how you tell the story right. can be just as funny mm-hmm. as the shit you're saying. Right. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, crazy but, like that, though. But, but I've seen people that be like... Words and words and words. Oh yeah! And oh words. yeah! yeah and did yeah, I yeah. forget no, words? No, no, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, there are more words and words and words. And then you'll say something funny, and then the crowd will be like, "Ha ha ha ha!" Yeah. Then you'll just keep going words and words and words. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes up. Bye. No, <laughs> yeah, they be doing specials. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. These be these specials at like these big yeah, venues yeah, 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 outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh my goodness! I've seen, it, dude. Like I said, I've watched Netflix specials. I'm like, I'm on the right path. You gotta keep doing it. That ain't the path you want to be on. No, but they're getting paid. You want to be on funny? And come on, man, that's gonna happen. I'm funny. <laughs> funny. That's just this. Look, look at my face. <laughs> Let's start there. Look at my fucking ears. Boop. It looks like I lost about 10 pounds. That's just my beard I shaved off. (laughs) I shaved off the equivalent of his beard right now. (laughs) Those are facts. But guess what? In about a month, a couple weeks. One week. About about the next month. So I got to do it at least a couple times a year just to keep, you know, the THC levels down. <laughs> you know, it just stays in your hair forever. I lost a job because it stays in for six months. And I stopped smoking for three months. And I thought I was good. They took, I went in for the job. This was like years ago, dude, before I went to, you know, that place. And, uh, <laughs> they were like, look, I, I, I made it up. They were like, got pee in this? I was like, cool, no problem. Pee and everything. They're like, okay, now we got to take care of like, huh? <laughs> they want their hand to take what? what are you talking about? They're like, yeah, yeah we got to take care I'm like, okay. I had a shaved head. I had my face shaved at the time, I believe. And I had my, I had my shit trimmed here. Arms basically were trimmed, not shaved. 
And guess what? They took a chunk out of my fucking leg hair, boy. Six months they go back. He didn't get the job. We found marijuana in your system. <gasps> Are you serious? I stopped like three months ago. It goes back six. Oh. <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? I guess I can't deliver snacks. <laughs> Can't deliver snacks, man. That would have been a legit job, dude. I was groomed for the position. For snacks. My dad worked for Free to Lay forever. I was trying to get a job at Free to Lay. And get the job. They test for hair. Ain't that a bitch? Terrible. I would have been the best dude. I used to do the fucking job for my father. So you already knew the route. I knew not that route, but I knew what to do. You go into a store, how you do everything, you check in, blah blah blah, scan the shit, take out the old stuff, blah, blah, replace it, and it's delivery fucking shit. Yeah, easy job. Move chips around. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Rotate, blah 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 blah. You gotta rotate the stock, blah, 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 fill up the fucking thing. Oh, this is how much you got fucking filled up. This is what you owe. Okay, thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Easy job, but oh, because I had marijuana in my system from six months fucking prior, I didn't get a job. You see, that's what fucks people in this fucking world right there because of fucking stupid shit like that. You know what? I almost fucked up my military career because of marijuana. You don't say? Yes. Two deployments, people. I got out of the military. I was good. Scott free. Out. But then... Hmm, rumors. They might go to Afghanistan. You don't say. I've never been there. I've seen a shirt. I rock Afghanistan. Been there, done that. Hmm, I want that shirt. <laughs> so you, you went for the shirt. I went for the shirt. Sign me up. No, I was like, fuck, I can pay out how much debt? I can pay that off? I can pay that school loan off? Okay, let's do it. So I got back in, signed back up. Of the year, but you know, that time off, Justin was Justin. <laughs> you saved nothing. Uh, you know what, man? I uh, I was pretty good at my timing, you know what I'm saying? Because the whole time I was in the first time, when I got back from Iraq, I smoked that before drills, I was just cool with how I, you know, cleaned up before I went. I stopped like two weeks prior, did my whole detox fucking thing. It was good. But when I was doing this, I was working for, for a different company. You know, I was working and I didn't have a chance to pee as much because I was out there and I didn't move around. And so I wasn't doing my normal routine. And I was like point something. It was like the, the, the bare minimum over the limit of what they fucking test for. And... And it was funny, dude. I knew I was going to get tested because after I peed in my bottle, my bottle went right in the middle of the box. Like, you know, you have like a bunch of rows. It was dead center in the middle. So, you know, when motherfuckers open the box, they grab for that middle motherfucker or a corner. Uh, it's just how it's tested. It's just statistically. <laughs> I knew I was fucked, dude. As soon as I see my bottle went in there, I was like, oh, here we go. It's, it's going to be close. It's going to be close because the whole day before I knew it was coming because I was in a position where I knew we had to take tests. So I was drinking mad water, dog, and I was so close. But one more day I've been scot free, but guess what? Good old fucking Sergeant Fuller fucking pissed hot because of that bullshit. And so I look, so they, so like when I, when they was uh, going through and everything, like they were like, I was about to get out anyway. So I talked to them, I was like, so what happens? They're like, nothing really happens. You go on probation. You got to do this, this and that. I'm like, cool. I'm cool with that. Whatever. I'm like, so I shouldn't say anything. They're like, no, you'll be fine. You're ETS and so you'll be getting out because I, because I signed up for a year, but since they weren't deploying to uh, Afghanistan, I was like, my wife was like, just get the fuck out. I'm like, wow. Well. <laughs> they weren't, and plus, I'm like, I ain't going to Iraq, I ain't going to Afghanistan, and it's bullshit going to drills back and forth. It's stupid. So, whatever. So, I was like, okay, I'll cool, I'll get out. So, I didn't even fight it. But then I got a letter in the mail, like, talking about, like, almost getting dishonorable discharge, and I'm like, wait a minute, uh, hold on, because, like, Sergeant Fuller has not shown any, like, re regret or whatever, I'm like, hold on, for one, they told me not to say nothing, so I was like, I wrote a letter, I'm like, to, you know, to whoever it concerns, like, 
this is my stance. I've done this. This is my record. I could have this dude, Sergeant Majors, Captains, Lieutenants, or all these people on my behalf speak on what kind of soldier I am. Meanwhile, I come on this. You know, I'm never late on drill. I've always passed PT tests. I've always had this, this, and that. Meanwhile, you got soldiers that show up hungover, doing nothing, sitting in the side, fucking, you know, doing shit. You know what I mean? Just... Fuck, calm down, you know, and basically I wrote, the, and they gave me my honorable discharge, you know what I'm saying, everything was cool and everything like that, but yeah. it's like, I had to write a letter, and I would have had people backing me up, I would have, because, uh, you know, wow. I had so many people in line, you know what I mean, obviously, the, the, the would have, but I'm like, the fact that that would have ruined what I've done prior. Whoever knew that Justin would be a name dropper, he, he was dropping all types of names, wasn't he? What? He's like, I'll have... Uh, Lieutenants and Sergeant Majors and General Lee. No, not General. <laughs> and Pat and Moose. I didn't say no names. I just know I'll people of every him. rank in that motherfucker right on me. my behalf in my country. I have Oliver North writing Look, the letter right now, along Look, with Cole everybody that served with me. Know I would be there and have everyone's back in a heartbeat. I have Sergeant Slaughter write Everyone a letter right that. now and send it to you. Everyone knows that. That's why I was from the gutter. Roadblock. Me and my boy were, were running miles and I was in motherfucking Recondo. skids. <laughs> <laughs> I have Roebuck and Recondo. I have Rambo write a letter of fucking Like support. right now. <laughs> <laughs> right the fuck now. I didn't even know the people I got. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it was, it was like, really? But, no. Nah, I right have now. Captain Lou Albano write a letter right now. <laughs> <laughs> On my be on my behalf. Look, man. Like anywhere, I'm a good soldier. I'm a good worker. I have fucking Devin <laughs> from Night Rider right a letter right now. <laughs> Night Rider. Oh shit. He, he was the CEO of Night Industry 2000. I have him write the letter right now. You know what's cool? What? I never met him. Mm -hmm. I didn't meet him. But the cool thing is, when I was in Iraq the first time, I think I've said this before, when we were leaving, the 101st Airborne Division came in, I think it was 101st, and they were led by Colonel Steele, at the time he was Colonel Steele, but I remember him from the movie of Black Hawk Down when he was Captain Steele. Mm. He yeah. was in that movie. Well, he wasn't in the movie, but he, his character, you know, was in that. Mm -hmm. That was him. Oh, wow. That's and he dope. was Colonel Seal at the time, and they were in Iraq, and they were taking over the area we were at. Nice. I didn't meet him, but that's cool as fuck. Yeah, that's cool. And how about that? That's dope. And they were, they were looking at us like, who the fuck are you guys, National Guard motherfuckers? Uh, <laughs> Hold like, on, sir. We've been here for a fucking year. We know what the fuck is going so, on. So they was looking at y'all like, look, the real soldiers are here. Yeah. Are like, Glad you held it down, but it's our turn, little guy. <laughs> what the fuck? They all coming in looking like uh, Delta Force, huh? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, no. We have the same fucking uniform because we were all active army. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got the motherfucking. The only reason I look on my, on my uh, dress greens. I got my, uh, I got the the uh, third ID badge mm -hmm. or patch, because uh, when we got there, we were with uh, the first ID. They were like, "At ease, Gomer Pyle." <laughs> Gomer Pyle, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, Sergeant. I was all Oh uh, yeah, right. I was a specialist when I got there the first uh, time. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It was fine. When you get deployed, dude, you get up in rank. So I got out. As a fucking PV-1, I think, is what they is when you're basic training. When you get to your unit, you get promoted to, like, PV-2. That's your, like, mosquito wings or bullshit. And then, like, uh, like throughout training, I got promoted to private first class, which is the little fucking rocker. Mm -hmm. So you have the thing and then the rocker. And then when I got deployed in Iraq, I was a specialist. I got deployed to be a specialist. There's like time frames plus war. When you're in the war zone, you can get promoted certain positions, blah, blah, blah. Paperwork shit. You know what I'm saying? You push it through. So I got promoted. So when I got back, I was a specialist. So that's how my shit, you know, I was already in line with the, with my uh, military points or whatever the case. I was, I was actually eligible to become, to go to like, uh, 
sergeant, you know, warriors class, whatever the case, WLC to become a sergeant so I can go there. So my shit moved pretty quickly, you know what I mean, because of the deployments, basically. But it's like, motherfucker, when we got there, eh, we're all in the same fucking uniform, <laughs> you know what I mean? National Guard, year 101st Airborne, but guess what? We're in Iraq, and we were here for a year. Respect what we were doing. Look, my buddy who was in a different area at the time, and he was there the same time we were in 2004, but he was in a different area. And when same thing happened. I think Marines came in or something happened where they got relieved. They were National Guard. They were like, hey, don't go down this area. This is where you... You okay, little buddy? <laughs> They got fucked up because they got hit with RPGs and all types of shit, man, because they didn't fucking pay attention and listen. Look, look, they were there for the fucking whole year running that territory. So they just thought they like... They were fucking little kids in the playground. But no, we do the same bullshit because we were trained a fucking six months prior. Right. We had a six-month train-up, plus we're fucking soldiers. We know what the fuck we're going to do. Right. Just because, you know what I mean? But people look at it, that's why... It, I got into it. I didn't get into it, but when I got back the first time, my wife's cousin was like, oh, you can meet this dude. He was in the military. And I'm like, oh, yeah. He was like, yeah, I was in the National Guard. He was like, I was a Marine. I was like, oh, basically the same thing. He just looked at me like I was a, a dummy. I'm like, I mean, you guys went in first, but basically you were just fucking shooting anything to fucking shot at you. You were, That's easy, in a sense, because that's just shooting at the enemy. When you're walking down the street, you don't know who the fuck the enemy is at that time. You get shot at any area, and they just got bombs, and you just think everything's cool. Yeah, it's a little dicey. You know, it's, I mean, either way, it sucks. Don't get it twisted. I would have hated to be the spirit. Well, I, would, I guess it would have been what it would have been, but you know what I'm saying? It would have been a lot. You know what the fuck you're doing. You know what to expect. There's a lot of times I went behind the door, I didn't know what the fuck to expect. That's a different feeling. You know right, what I'm saying? right. Kind of the unknown. You just fucking do it. You know what I'm saying? There's been plenty of times, like I said, when I went to go search a car, I looked back at my boy, I'm like, this could be it. <laughs> I'll be back, maybe. I had to go search it. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of those deals. It's just, but, but now I get to go do comedy. You know what I'm saying? There's there's those things where, it's, and some people didn't. So the shit was real. You know what I'm saying? So well, regardless of what unit or what fucking, you know, branch of the military, branch of the military motherfucker, shit happened. Even people, I mean, I talk shit about, like, in the Army, like, there's only two jobs, infantry and those who support it. Right. But even people who, like, transportation, man, they were getting hit by IEDs on the road, just traveling from base to base. Trying what to, is the IUD? IED. It's a... In a, in a, was it improvised explosive device is what it's actually called improvised explosive device so it's IED it's basically a bomb however they decide to set it up with whatever ammunition they have and they set it on the side of the road which you go by it being a tire you don't know it's a tire drive by boom you know what I'm saying there's wow. been plenty of things there was like T barriers you know like those cement barriers that are like uh, to block off shit mm -hmm. well there's some you know like like at parades, they'll have them like this high. Right. Well, they had some that were big, and they're because they're building and shit and trying to block shit off. Well, they've had some where they cut the tops off and remanufacture with bombs in them, so they would blow up like the fucking uh, gunners and shit. Yeah. yeah, that's what I had to worry about the fucking second time. <laughs> they 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 changed their tactics because of the shit going on. Wow. Yeah, it's just you, it's like the first time that we didn't let no cars around us because they would drive up and blow up. Well, we had to start integrating, so we would let them drive up close. Now you got to worry about, you know what I'm saying? Right, so right. You, so instead of going real fast. So what we would do is keep everyone off of us and just go fucking flying down the highway, basically. It'd be us going down fucking 77 in a four-vehicle fucking set with, like, fucking 30 feet from motherfuckers from us because we would shoot warning shots if they got close enough. That's how we had to roll because wow. we were worried about it. Then the second time I get there... No, we can't do that no more. We have to integrate because we're fucking trying to transition. You can't be shooting at motherfuckers because people were taking advantage and killing people, obviously. They were fucking... Mm. That was one thing I was so glad I never did was fucking kill anybody from a warning shot. You know what I'm saying? But I shot off a lot. <laughs> I shot off a lot. There ain't no lies in it. I shot a lot of warning shots, but I never fucking think I'd kill nobody. 
The people was killing people doing it. Pro- hundred percent. Hundred percent. Again, I was I didn't probably witness on purpose. it. Pur- purpose accident. Because I remember, like I said, I, I remember we were going through a village, like well, towns, Cardassia, and it was like uh, shit, like going down like blocks, you know, like downtown, big buildings and shit. You know what I'm saying? And we were making this turn <coughs> in this car. It was when my buddy was home on leave, so I had to be in the lead vehicle. Now I'm a lead gunner. <coughs> And this car just came out of this fucking alleyway right in front of us, right? So, I mean, jetted out in front of us. So I just fucking shot at the ground, and the the side window broke, and he went down like the dude went down like this. And I'm just like, I fucking shot him in the head, right? And I just so now I'm like, <gasps> but now we gotta stop and see what's up. And now we're in the middle of these buildings, so now we're just fucking stopped. So now I gotta play full security. I can't worry about that shit. You know what right. I'm saying? Now I gotta do my job, but. It happened so fast that I thought I shot this dude in the head where they pulled off and it just the ricochet must have went up at the window. And, you know, because the window broke, he just went down. You know what I mean? But he was fine. But boy, hey, for me, I'm like, oh, thank God. And it wasn't right. nobody. Thank God he wasn't doing nothing. But he, that was the rules. And when we were, that was what we were trained to do. When right. somebody, you can't let no vehicle just shoot out in front because it could blow up. You know what I mean? We don't know what the fuck. You right. know what I'm saying? So. Right. I did my job. Thank God nobody died. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I had to pull security and not even worry about what the fuck just happened. Because we don't know if now that we're in a spot, is somebody going to shoot down from a rooftop? Right. A lot of shit at that 25-year-old age. <laughs> the- you don't think about that shit until you, you know, you, you know, you're back home and you're like, you process everything you've been through. Right. And you're like, I've been through a lot. So, you know, people that fucking are in traffic, I'm like, I fucking hate you. Simple-minded, silly fucking, you know, people in stores. Yeah. It took me a while. And and, and then when you come back, you you start getting a little angry and you're like, relax. The fuck? You just were in this. This is fucking not. I remember how many times I stood, stood in line and was like, no big deal. This is like before, like. TikTok and all that shit was a thing. I'd be standing in line like, motherfuckers be angry. And I'm like, because in the military, you stand in lines forever. Especially alphabetically. Luckily, I was in the middle of that motherfucker almost, like towards the front. Fuller, I felt bad for motherfucking my buddy is out pony. <laughs> I'm rest pressed. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been in the back. Yeah, but the cool thing is my buddy Fuqua, he was right next to me. So it was cool as shit. So we were like him, my buddy Bert, because he was filming, so uh, we were always just like there. You know okay. what I'm saying? So you're always, that's how you kind of meet people too, because of your fucking last name. You're stuck in lines for fucking ever, so you just might as well talk shit. You know what I'm saying? Might as well. But that, that's that's why I float so well at stores, dude. When I'm smoking my shit. Motherfuckers be in lines, be angry. <laughs> I never understood that. Because everyone's in a hurry. They're, everyone's in a hurry. Well, I, I can see being impatient if the person is like going slow and moving slow or holding a conversation with the person in front. But even then. I, I hate that. You know, keep it moving. I get it. But what if the person's out? I mean, you have personality. You're a talkative person. What if you're trying to be at work and you're there all day and you're like, hey, how you doing? And they get to talking. I've done it. Yeah, so people behind them like, fuck them motherfuckers. No. I'm not my job. No, I, I've done it. I've done as it. As long as you keep it moving while you're talking. Yeah, I, I keep it moving while I'm talking and I keep the line going too. I, I try to be real fast. Yeah. I go through a lot of checkout by myself. Just keep shit moving. What? That's, shit? How, that's how I move. Float. You know, that's how I float because I just go and do shit myself. I ain't in many lines, you know what I'm saying? Because if anything, it's a line to go check myself out. Because <laughs> I can do it myself, you know what I'm saying? I hate self checkout. I know it takes away from a fucking person. Yeah, I know that, and, and and I struggle with the bags. Well, that's a simple mind. You gotta work on. <laughs> that's terrible. I don't. I think this is unsanitary. <sighs> well, licking it down. Yeah, I don't do it. How do you get it? I just keep fucking smacking that bitch until it fucking opens up. That's how you do it? Yeah. It works? Sometimes. Sometimes you pull a bag off. Go to and it'd be one. like five or six of them. Fuck it. Nah. Move so to the next one, so this if, bitch. if I had like a spongy thing uh-huh. or like the little wax things, 
it would be better. But, Some places have those right by Yeah, but that's nasty as hell. <laughs> well, because there's community sponges? Yes. <laughs> that's disgusting, man. Well, I but, get it. But I'm have just some saying. some fucking, uh, you know. Sanitize. Yeah, afterwards. Or you can have it during. You know, normally I do. But so I, why don't you use that to but, wet but, it? But I'm not one of those people that carry a purse. You got no, uh. Man bag or nothing? Yeah, no fanny pack? Yeah, Hell no. fanny no. pack? The fuck? Ah, uh, you don't remember fanny pack? Dude. I, I remember, but I don't have one. I the used to rock my fanny Apparently, Joe Rogan still rocks fanny pack. That's like his thing. They're convenient as fuck. No. I'm so mad they kind of went out of style. Beta it's pack. Kind of beta, but dude, I think beta my, pack. everything in my pockets could be avoided with a fanny pack. Well, you know what? Remember, though, we used to do it cool as fuck, though. We used to have it fucking to the side, to the hip, and like, like you sagging were, a like little you, bit. Like he was Han Solo or something? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I can exactly like Han Solo. So you were Han Solo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> With a red fanny pack. I think it was red. No, that's more like Tomb Raider. That's beta. Beta. It's <laughs> <laughs> like some Laura Croft. Man, that was back in motherfucking uh, skate skateway and Rescue shit when Rangers. I was like going skating and shit. I mean, it was time and, and date for fanny packs. Yeah. Now they got the cross. Yeah. Satchels. I'm trying to bring it back. Fashion. Man Not, purse. Uh, Merce. Man purse. That's what that is. Look, I got my wallet and I got my keys. I got my phone, but that's a big motherfucking thing. I just think that... It's convenient as fuck is what I'm saying. Things that... If you're going to have a purse, male or female, it should be a couple of things that everybody should carry at all times. It should be WD-40 duct tape and... A Philip and straight head screwdriver at all times, and if you can't get a, a small hammer for everybody that wears <laughs> carry purses, you that's you gonna keep in the purse. Yeah, WD forty duct tape, duct tape, and a flathead and Philip screwdriver. Well, and a hammer if you can find one of the little hammers, <laughs> like a mallet, a little one. What about those extendo things? Remember those fucking things? Those are illegal, but those are like the, the batons. batons. Yeah. Um, those are legit. It's up to you, but I, I, I mean, I know where you can get them from. I know. Oh, you can get them online. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they used on Rodney King. And that's some fucked up shit, assholes. Yeah. I don't want to go red on this episode. Do we want to bring it up? This is Black History Month. Do we want to. <laughs> I don't know. I'm afraid. It's my brother's birthday today. Happy birthday. 50th birthday. Don, Dang. Don Jr. Don Jr. Not really Jr., but Don, Don, you know, he's he's the younger. He's named after the Don. He's named after the Don. Yeah. Happy birthday to my brother. He's Happy 50 birthday. years old. Ain't that some the stuff? Big 5 old. Yes. It's crazy. Wow. He's still Half got his century. Hair? Yeah. Looks good. He got gray on his eye? Well, he has like a little patch. Just a little patch. Okay. He can't grow a beard like me, though. Hello! <laughs> you can't grow the beard like me. You ain't get that gene. I'm the fucking teen wolf in the family. I'm the one that carries a goddamn hairy <laughs> hair gene or some shit. Yeah. It's amazing, people. I'm like a human chia pet. I've said that before. 50 years old, though, dog. Shout out to him. Damn. I'm thinking about that. With being 50? Yeah. <clears throat> Six you years are away. Half of a century. Six years away. It's funny because he's, me and my, so he's six, no, my sister's four. Wait, no. Yeah, no, I'll be five. Oh, yeah, I'll be 45 this year. So we're five years apart. Old as fuck. I'm 45 this year, so we're five years apart. Yeah. Old as fuck apart. My sister, my older sister, we're two years apart. She'll be 47 this year, I believe. She's more my age. Yeah. And then my younger sister is 30. She'll be 35 this year. 35? Yeah. Wow. My son just turned 25. Yeah. Last week. Crazy. Numbers. Hey, yeah, numbers, man. Damn. I'll tell you, man. It's You got to embrace these moments because... The older you get, it's like, how many more do I got? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm hoping fucking 80-ish, 80s, 
I mean, I love nineties, but yeah, if it was up to me, I'll, I'll go in ninety three. Not bad until you're ninety three. See what the fuck you got going on. You're like, mm, maybe one more year. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because some people want to make it to 100. But I, I, I don't want to see a lot of people go, man. I'd rather go before a lot of people. Uh, I don't like to think about that shit. but you know, I don't either. But, you know, you know, it's not up to me. No, nah, it ain't up to me, man. Oh. But before everybody goes, <laughs> I got a show coming up March 30th. March I still 30th? got a couple tickets, yeah. Where is it? It is in Beachwood. And it is a charity show, and I misspoke earlier about it. I think I said it was about somebody who lost somebody, but I think it's just for families in need of groceries, which is still a good cause. So regardless of the charity, come out and support that. Come on, support. And plus it's going to be a fire show. Oh, it's going to be a fire show. I can't wait. Like I said, you got Rich Green hosting. You got Britton Grace is going to be up there rocking the damn thing. He's out in the improv doing his shit. You know, you got me, little old me. This dude, Justin Fullard. And then you got Chad Tate rocking the shit. I am Chad. Chad. I am Chad. Yeah, we're Chad gonna have him. Chad on next week. Next week. The, you know, Tune in to that one. That's a good show. Yeah, he, Great comic, funny wanna, guy. Not gonna want to miss that one. He's actually one of my uh, one of my favorite comics to watch. Definitely Craig, in this area. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's definitely gonna be you know going somewhere, man. I can't wait. I can't wait to check it out. It's gonna be a good episode. You know what I'm Chad. saying? I said Craig. I'm sorry. Uh, Chad. Yeah, no, I can't wait because I, we've been trying to get his ass on. Yeah. Timing, and then like the mm. new year. We got a fire lineup this year, boy. We got so many Stay people. tuned. We got some great guests coming for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. You know. What else you got coming up? Oh, you got a show in a couple weeks. March 8th? March 8th, I'm going to have a all-female lineup. What? And I, I was told it, that was National Women's Day or something. I'm not 100%. What? Yeah, man. So... That's going to be a fire lineup. There's a lot of funny women in this area that's doing their thing. I will be there. You checking don't want to miss it. No, you won't, because I can only imagine. Because I know the fire females in the area, so everyone in the Cleveland area. Make sure you go check out this show. It's going to be dope. You know what I'm saying? We got that. We're going to be at the Funny Stop next week. You already know. Doing the damn thing. So if you're in that Cuyahoga Falls area... Come check us out. Or if you're down here, you want to come, come down there and check it out. Make sure you're for a comic. Yeah. Call. Get on stage down there. Get Shit. on stage. It's open mic. Yeah. Make sure you call. Check it out. Get on stage. This guy. What? <laughs> Full of energy. He's been yawning the whole time. <laughs> Get on stage. It takes. Get on stage to move the world. <sighs> All right, everybody, hey, please make sure you hit the like, the subscribe, the notifications, if you will. So that way you know, because we've been premiering these bad boys on Saturdays at 7 p.m. It's like, it's like, uh, if you ain't got nothing going on, you ain't got shit doing it, pop on at 7 o'clock. Because guess what? It's like a live show. It's premiering, baby. Coming at you live. live. You can always check it out later in a post, but that's when it's going. That's when we're doing it, trying to hit the algorithm, trying to get more eyes on it. So if you're just checking us out, appreciate you. If you've been riding with us, we love you. you. We love you. Get the merch, pre take pictures, send it to me. I'm putting a video together. Got to put it out there. Got to show all the love to all the people who show the love to us. For sure. Always going to ride with you. If we get a shirt, we get a shirt. I got a shot glass from Jen Jen last night, so I'm going to be doing a shot next week. With some fireball. Fireball. Bringing that back. Remember we used to do shots of fireball? We used to do that every time before a show. But we had to stop that. That was more money. No, we just stopped because you was like, I don't want to drink fireball. Every night. Yeah. So. But we're going we gonna to do it next week. Fireball. fireball. And, and Jen Jen's shot glass. Absolutely. At your show? Her. No, here. Okay. On the podcast. What about... As your show, tradition. Oh, I don't know if they serve alcohol there. Are they going to serve alcohol? That's why we got to bring it. Well, you know, I need my lick, sir. 
Some loose suck and talk my stuff, Biot. This episode of the Midnight Pocket Podcast brought to you in part by the Acumen Paralegal Services. Help you help yourself the legal way. The services that they offer is they help with documents that need to be typed, guardianships, probate, divorce, wills and trusts, complaints, business organization, financial planning, and legal research and writing. Go ahead and give them a call at 216-727-0049 or 216-456-2000. Michelle White will get you right. That's right! Where can they find you at? Oh, yeah! Just for the comedy on Instagram. I am the underscore great underscore C-O-R-E-E. That's where you can find me. Or you can find us both at the Midnight Paco Podcast on Instagram. This dude also has a website. JustMillerComedy.com, please. Check it out. We got yeah. the episodes. We got the merch. We got the Justice League. We got Cordell, because he's the only one in the Justice League. Me and him. Building it. Trying to build it. We got the photo gallery of us. Basically behind the scenes. Of all the good times. I gotta update it, but there's a lot of good photos. Good times. All the people that be watching, you know you've seen us out there. You're probably in one of those pictures. <laughs> good times. Love you all. See you next week. Peace out. Midnight Park. Midnight Park Podcast. Midnight, 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 midnight. Midnight Park. Midnight Park Podcast. Midnight Park. Midnight Park Podcast.